Hi there, my name's Alistair, I'm a coach at City Rock, and today I'm going to chat to you about fingerboarding. So, what is fingerboarding? It's a simple and effective way of training for climbing that you can do at home or at the gym, and it doesn't take a lot of time. By hanging on a board that looks like this, you can train your fingers and your forearms to be stronger and to have more endurance. Fingerboarding is so specific and so controllable that it's one of the best ways to train for climbing when you can't get to the gym. You can control the grip size, the angle, the shape. You can control the load by adding or reducing weight. And you can control the work-rest ratio, which is how often you're working compared to how often you're resting. Why should you be fingerboarding? Because strength is one of the pillars of climbing performance and something you should constantly be working on. And more robust fingers are less likely to get injured. Before we get started with our fingerboard protocol, there's a few things we need to know. The first thing is how to actually hold your holds on the fingerboard. So the smaller edges where you aren't holding a jug or a flat edge, but you're holding something a bit smaller, you either want to be holding with an open hand crimp or a half crimp, but either way you don't want your thumb to be involved. You want to make sure your thumb is off the hold and just resting on the side. So. A half crimp is where your fingers are bent at 90 degrees and the open hand crimp, sometimes called a three finger drag, is where your three longest fingers, these three, are on the hold and your hand is as open as it can be while still holding on. The next thing to know is what are your shoulders and elbows doing while you're on the fingerboard. So you want to make sure that your elbows are not straight, that they're slightly bent and that your shoulders are down and away from your ears not shrugged up like this. If you have a look at these two photos, you can see the difference between good technique and bad technique for your shoulders and elbows. And the last thing is to watch this video from Lattice Training about three common mistakes that they found people make while they're fingerboarding. So definitely check that out. The link is in the description. Warming up before you start fingerboarding is really important. Fingerboarding is quite intense and the load it places on your fingers and your joints is quite intense as well. So when you're warming up, don't hold back. Make sure you're working up a sweat and make sure that your body is prepared for the exercises you're going to be doing during your fingerboard protocol. I rest for about 5-10 to 10 minutes after my warm up before I start my protocol. Um, but that's up to you. If you feel ready after 5 minutes, that's cool. If you don't feel ready after 10 minutes, maybe give it another few minutes before you start. And you want to adapt your warm-up to your fitness level. If you're really fit, you might need a longer, more intense warm-up compared to someone who's not fit. This is my fingerboard warm-up that I do at home. If you'd like to use it, that's perfect. But if you don't, there's a whole bunch online that you can look for. And most of those are pretty good. I start with 5 to 10 minutes of cardio. Skipping, running around the garden, burpees, anything that gets the blood pumping and a sweat going. Then I'll do some dynamic mobility exercises for the upper body. I do threading the needle, snow angels, and wall angels. Then I'll head to where my fingerboard is and start doing my serious fingerboarding warm-up. I start with crazy arms, which is basically punching the air with both arms and windmilling your arms around. That really gets the shoulders nice and ready. Your elbows are nice and warm after that. It's a really good start. Then I'll head to some finger tendon glides where I'm just lubing up the tendons in my fingers and getting them ready to be hanging on the board. Then I'll move into some jump pull-ups where my legs are assisting me into the pull-up so my body isn't working too hard. And I'll do quite a few of those, 10 to 15. Then I'll do some finger rubbing where I just rub my fingers against each other Try work into the knuckles. That's really good because it gets the blood flowing in the fingers. Then I'll move on to some push-ups. These are really good because while you're hanging on the board, you still want to be using your chest as well as your back. And push-ups warm up your chest muscles to help stabilize you while you're hanging on the fingerboard. Then I'll move on to some wrist rolls. And once I've done about 10 of those in each direction with both hands, I'll move on to some trunk rotations where I'm just moving my torso around, activating my abs and my lower back. Then I'll do a few crunches and a little bit of planking. And then I'll move on to hanging on the board 
I'll do something called feet on finger pull-ups where my feet are on the ground I grab quite a small edge and I use my feet to assist me while I open and close my fingers going from an open hand crimp all the way through to almost a closed crimp but without using my thumbs and I'll do five or ten of those then I'll grab hold of the jugs and do some scapular pull-ups this activates the muscles around my scapula and in my back to help me maintain proper form while I'm hanging I don't want my ears shrugged up and I want to warm up those muscles that are keeping my shoulders away from my ears and then finally I'll progress to some two or three second hangs on bigger edges working my way down to smaller edges and for some of those I'll keep my feet on and slowly increase how much weight is hanging on my fingers and once I've done that and I feel like I'm kind of ready I'll start at the beginning and do all of them again. Now that you're nice and warm, it's time to start your fingerboard protocol. And which protocol you choose depends on the outcome that you want. The size of the hold, how often you're hanging for, how long you're resting for, all of those things determine what your protocol achieves. So if you want to train endurance, you want an endurance protocol. And if you want to train strength or power, you want a protocol that's suited to that as well. The internet is filled with different protocols and fingerboard routines that you can do. What's really important is that the routine you're doing or the protocol that you're doing is appropriate to what you want to achieve and that you're doing it consistently. Only fingerboarding once every two weeks is not enough to get you the training benefit that you want. Depending on how often you're climbing and how hard you're climbing, which at the moment during the quarantine is none, you should be fingerboarding two or three times a week and if you're doing two hard boulder sessions a week, then one session a week of fingerboarding is all right. But if you're doing lots of endurance climbing in the gym or outside, then you should be doing two fingerboard sessions in a week. While you are doing your warm up, it's important to pay attention to your body and listen to what your body is telling you. Are you feeling at 100%? If so, perfect. Continue with the session and make sure you put in a good quality effort. Quality over quantity is really important when it comes to fingerboard training, especially for strength and power. If you're not feeling great in the warm-up, now's a good time to pay attention to your body and dial your session back a bit. Have a feel. If you're not feeling great because you're just a little tired or not rested or you haven't eaten the right meal beforehand, carry on with the session but maybe reduce your intensity. But if you're really feeling terrible, call the session off and make sure that when you do do your sessions, you're giving a proper effort, a good quality effort. Now that you're done with your fingerboard protocol, you're going to want to cool down. This takes your body from a state of exercise to a state of rest and recovery, which is quite important because you want to be able to recover well so that the next time you train, you're ready for it. So I start with five minutes of gentle cardio, it can be some gentle skipping around the garden, it can be a gentle row or a run, up to you. Just you want to be exercising, but not very intensely. And once I've done that, I go into a forearm massage, which I do with my opposite hand. So one hand massages my forearm and the other hand just rests. And the hand that's doing the massaging is just kneading the muscle. And that exercises this hand and gives this muscle a nice massage. And once I've done that for about two minutes, then I'll swap to the side. Once I've done my forearm massage, I massage my fingers. So I get some boo-boo butter, rub that over my hands, and then I gently massage my fingers. I press into the palm. There's a nice muscle here by your thumb that can get a good massage. And I press in between where my fingers go into my hand here, and I give that a good massage as well. And then obviously around the knuckles, once I'm done with those, then I go into some deep stretching and this is a good time to put on a podcast, listen to some music and try to relax as much as possible. For my stretches, I start with my forearms. I do the front of my forearms and the back of my forearms as well. The extensors and the flexors because both of them are working when we're training on the fingerboard. Then I go into stretching out my shoulders. And once I've done that, I go into stretching out my chest and stretching out my back. You can find a whole bunch of stretches online and I'll put a link below to some good ones that I enjoy doing. Fingerboarding is a great tool for training your fingers to handle the load that climbing puts on them, reducing the chance of injuries and improving strength. 
You should be fingerboarding in some form or another for most of your climbing career if you want to see continuous improvement and to help protect against finger injuries. That's it for today. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and stay tuned. I'll be doing some videos on different fingerboard protocols that you can do at home. See you soon.